So if you're in the room, you're being recorded. Although your name will never appear. Nor your likeness. Well, we're trying to navigate that VWAP. You know, look how those candles react to that 144. And finally, just a strong push through. It's worthy of respecting. That's why I wanted that long fair value gap level 144 as a backup all the way to VWAP. It did that. It just didn't get down far enough for me to enter. So let's see what happens. All right, at 50% of the range. And let's do a volume profile here. All right. Seems like this is the tug of war line, doesn't it? We're laddering, laddering, laddering. If you're going short, you better go small. Because at this point, I'd have to put us here. I was in the second ladder up, but it, that's not the one that made it explode up. So that 144 was really holding it down. So here's my entries I did. Long here, and I shorted there. Now we wait. You're sitting here going, okay, where would be the long? Opens 2675 right there. I'm going to move this 30 minute level over so I get a little bit of a clearer look. You know, around in 2.30, half hour to go, 2.30 my time, 3.30, New York. You know, and the one thing that I always point out, are we bouncing off the back sides or are we bouncing off the front sides? And uh, we're basically bouncing off the front sides, it seems like. It's really muddy, but it's definitely not bouncing off back sides. So it's weak. It's a weak advancement. That's a good way to look at it. Yep. You know, and you only get those backside runs when you kind of have clear skies, and we don't have clear skies. Yeah, the 15 minute fair value gap that I was uh, uh, telling you about just got filled. I guess it was a good trade, but I wasn't going to take it. Beautiful. Yeah, that was great. You called it perfect. Yeah, I wasn't going to take it after the fourth kind of candle trying to push through VWAP. I agree with you. It's just not worth it. Too many, too many easier trades. <laughs> there are easier trades. You did preface it. I forgot the exact word you used, but it was perfect. If you want to yeah, do something dangerous. The paddle thing, I think, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's, there are so many trades of the day, but, you know, as a trader, you just need to classify them as, you know, the level of importance or significance to to you in, in Georgia system will, will definitely provide that, right? Which is awesome. Now you just need to have the self restraint, right? To to follow the program, which is great, and not get bored. Bored will lead to worse trades. And you know, and one of the reasons why, in all honesty, we live in a world of instant gratification. You can get anything you want in an instant. Trading's the one thing. You will not get in an instant. And so it requires telling the child within you, set down, shut up, and wait. I do like how we made a higher high here. I'm trying to push that VWAP. I'm thinking we need a little bit more of a pullback and then a go. We got a nice one-minute level right here. Definitely need to work on my trading patience. I hear you, man. And the payoff is, is this is one of the reasons the end of the day charts is so powerful. It's the confidence to know if I just wait, I'll get them. I will get the trades. Maybe not this session in the sense of the afternoon session. But you know, over a two day period, you're going to have plenty of trades. Totally agree. And if you, if you, are impatient you take trades that that aren't following the system and let's say you now all of a sudden you're down 10 points well you change your mindset on the day because now you're working yourself out of a hole 
I'm sure everybody's been there at one point or another because I know I have. So following rules uh, prevents that from happening uh, because your mindset of when you're trading out of a hole versus trading from flat or uh, up on the day is completely different. That was a vomit. And here is a hold level. What's it going to, a break level? Now I'm on a third, on one minute chart, not nearly as strong. Let's go to a three minute. Power of a three minute chart. And I did go long off of this break. We'll see what happens here. Got a backup level under you. Doesn't mean it's going to, but let's see. No, not green. Got the 144 right underneath neath that. And then this kind of break. So we'll see. Not bad. I was willing to take that risk because uh, we've made a higher high. We are laddering. Got the 144 under us. So we'll see. There we go. Come on, get up there. Come on, don't come back and get me. All right, I was aggressive. I took my 50%. Very nice. Entry. All right. I don't like how it took out the break level. Like even if you take the lowest candle, I do not like how it took that out. So as soon as it got me back into the profit, I was aggressive in my stop. If it had just matched it, I would not have been as aggressive. But the fact it took it out, to me, that's writing on the wall. And so now there are targets down here. You can say, oh, Georgia was going to fill the gap. I got you, <laughs> but it did take out a break level to do that. You know, and the fair value gap is actually right here at 94, 75, 94, 25. The VWAP is right there. Go, go, go. I did go long there, but it wicked me pretty quick, but I did go long. I'm going to mark it. All right, now I'll watch. I don't have a long or a short I'm interested in now. George, did you say you went long off that um, hold level there? Here, let me bring up my trades. I went long twice. I went long off this break. The then second. I went long off the, the hold level that finished the fair value gap. Yeah. Hey, you know, just as a thought, I saw you do something the other day, George, with those green and red circles. Yeah. I don't know how you did it but all of a sudden it got bigger yeah i was thinking that might be a way to if you wanted to say like oh this was higher leverage you just make oh, it look bigger that's interesting i saw you do it the other day by mistake i think it was like i don't know how you did it yeah you can drag it like this right <laughs> right so i was just saying if if you want if you want to that's interesting that is an easy way just to you know the bigger the the circle the more leverage i love it i think it's a fantastic idea don't know if I want to do that on every trade, but yeah, that makes sense. Just to, you know, in case I think what to. I'll do is on a trade that I feel like was worthy of big leverage, I'll make it bigger and the yeah. rest, I'll just keep them normal, normal. That way I'm not trying to make another decision. Yeah. Cause you could just say, oh, here are the one or two big ones for the day. You know? So anyway, I, I went long with you on that one there and I got like point and a quarter. But my big trade would have been this one right here right here but price did not get down there right yeah i missed out i wanted that. that trade so bad yeah that was all lined up i was but, lined up but i had a higher amount of capital there but i went less later yeah makes sense because i wasn't as confident then you know what i mean yeah when it took out this swing low this break level i i, I definitely went smaller here but i i still did very well because we are laddering up so i'm willing to take that chance against this break level in the 144. You know, it was kind of nice, just that last little trade right there that brought me to my daily amount. So that's- A new disclosure, Dom, and it's almost over. <laughs> Here in a few minutes, we'll do the three minute markings of all the trades, because I'm not gonna trade here much longer. Actually, I'm done, done. I gotta be done, done. That's like, I'm not leaving the area, <laughs> just- All right, well, as long as you're, you're done, George, I'll, I'll bring something up uh, that, and Craig has shared 
um, which is a 50% mark on a candle, right? When you get these little small candles. I thought that was you. Well, I, I, I've been using it and I made him make a indicator for it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, I thought you were, uh, say, I thought you were the 50% candle guy. Go ahead. Yeah. So go to your, let's discuss something uh, outside of the core. Go ahead. Yeah. On your, on your, uh, three minute chart, go to 1509. Three minute chart, go to 1509. Blue candle drops down, right? Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Okay, so if you were to have the fifty percent mark, right? I see that often, and it's always in the back of my head. Ever since y'all talk, I I heard y'all talking about it, and I watched that too. And it's amazing how many times that actually happens as a front run. Well, yeah. So, so basically, the candle at fourteen fifty four. Okay, go to that candle. I'm there. If you had that indicator, the blue dot would be sitting sure. right at the bottom of the wick on the candle at 1509. Right. So this is really only applicable when you get larger candles, right? So you know it doesn't go and fill the gap, which the gap would be from the 1451 candle right? The fair value gap that's created. You know it's just not going to dump right to that. You need some target areas in between, right? The 50% mark on taller candles, if I had to put a number on it, and you got to talk to Craig on this, and I don't even know if we can come up with it, but I see it probably happen 80% of the time, right? Where it'll pull back to that 50% mark from the large candle, which it just did in the example I showed you. So, you know, not trying to change things up, just trying to show you the things that I see happening day in and day out, right? Kind of like the gotten things. I don't know if this is a, a level that can be layered onto it or not, but it's something that I see quite often. I don't know how this thing decides to do it, but I do notice when I click on some of these candles, click on the candle, it puts a dot at the 50% mark on some of the candles automatically. So it's something I've noticed about TradingView. I don't know exactly why or whatnot, but it puts it at 50% on a lot of the candles. And how often does it line up just on that little area, right? No, I, I, I do not mind front running. And um, I'll, I'm will i going to pay a little more attention to the 50% of that candle as a front run. Big candles, uh, though. Load it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And load it a little bit more towards where I would want it to be. But I mm-hmm. wanted to be in that trade, and I front ran it two points, which is pretty strong. But it needed to be a little bit. Well, no, not there. Yeah, it needed to be front run three points in this case. Yeah, and you know me, I do weird things, right? I use the 144 EMA because it follows price action more aggressively, right? So I was able to get into that trade based on the 144 Let's EMA. Pull that up. A, I posted it in. That's all other strategies. Let me let me go in here. Let's go to 144 on the EMA. Let's color this purple just to have it different. No, I don't. If I did that right, I don't know how that's helped you. Yeah. So mine was sitting at 97, and then it came across that price. Did. EMA didn't change anything. Yeah, it's using you the have a yeah, huge one. So let me try it again. Post this EMA. So I think you'd have to grab a different indicator, but I'll post it in there. Here, let strategies. me come down here and delete. I added three of them. All right, let's try that again. Off the one minute. Thank you, sir. That makes sense now. 144. That makes sense. Purple. Okay. Now that makes sense. That 100% makes sense. So I might keep both of them on there to see how I like that. Let's move this thing up here. So I got all three of them. 
I hate them on my chart because they're ugly. I but... feel like it's going to be too much for you already, George. I just know you for you. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and off periodically, just as a, you know. And the reason I do what I'm doing is it, is it follows it more aggressively. What, do you do, what are you doing sure. at the core of what you're doing? You're front running. So if you're front running, EMA would be more appropriate for your style than MA. MA would be your break level. EMA would be your home level. If I had to put an analogy to it, sure. that's how I would say it. Well, I'll have, I'll keep it on there, turn it on or off from time to time. See if I think it helps me. Sure. Everybody's different, right? That's the whole idea of this, right? You trade different than I. We all are basically doing the same thing with minor tweaks. Yeah, Evan, I saw that. Chart back up. All right. Let's see if it can make a new high. Well, that long off the closing of the fair value gap was a good move. Let's see what happens. I'm actually not interested in any more trades. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to move all of this into folders, turn them all off, and let's do our end of the day chart together. Don't need to trade the last 15 minutes. Tuesday, end of the day. Let's go to three minute. We're there. Okay. So there are our morning trades. So let's do our end of the day here. Hold level, two candle clearance. It's a short and that candle looks too big. <laughs> oh, well. So there's a short there. How much heat would you have taken? Theoretically, three points or so. And boy, if you'd have held on, that could have been near a trade of the day for sure. Let's see where our next trade might be. No, no. Actually, yes, right here. I am on the... I'm on the three minute, yes. Trade of the day, two candle clearance, touched it perfect. Oh, you're killing me. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I don't like that that's bigger. There we go. All right. And then it, I was actually looking in here like, okay, how can I get short? Of course, I didn't know that was going to happen. I'm like, well, that's already touched once. And then I drew this break level and I said, okay, if it goes to the break level, I'm going to go short, but it didn't get there. So no trade. I mean, because if you look at this, is this not obvious? So I said, okay, if it got up to this break level, I was going to take a short and it didn't happen. So whatever. Don't matter. Lots of trades. And you had no trade in the vomit. Now, what you did have down here at the bottom is you had two 30 minute break levels. Not that you want to go long against this monster thing. And I would not have, I was begging everybody not to trade it. And you got some people like to whiz on the electric fence. And, uh, but so after the big vomit, what do I want to see? I want to see it bounce at least two times off the new levels. So, you know, here's definitely one of them. Like, okay, that actually bounced off the backside base of that candle, but hey, I like to see that it bounced there. And you could draw this and go, hey, it bounced again. All right, we seem to be laddering up. I am interested in a long now. And uh, this was that trade right there. Literally just took green. And I would not have counted any of these other ones. You didn't have two candle clearance, but they were bouncing. And that's all I really wanted. I wasn't looking for a two candle clearance bounce. I want to see that we start bouncing. So after that vomit, that was really. Let's see, nothing, nothing. Well, technically, if you don't care about trend, you had two candle clearance right here. You took four points of heat, five points, they went your direction, but I certainly wouldn't be taking that trade, but I'm going to mark it because that's kind of my end of the day system. Just mark it. Would it have been successful with zero analysis? Well, it's hard to fit all that in there. I think there's your trades. Morning had 11 of them. If you count break levels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen trades. 
14 for 14, no losers. This one might have been close, but there's a couple trades you shouldn't take. And I'm going to make those notes. No sense in taking that long there. But you can do whatever you want. Small, do it. The other trade that I think you should not have taken is this one. Why? For the exact opposite reason. Should not take. Obviously, laddering. It's easy to read. Any other notes you think we should take there? I missed a trade. A trade I actually took, and I missed it. Right here, I took this short. Actually, I did take it kind of big. I'm going to keep it like that. All right, that's one more trade. I don't see anything else. I'm really happy I took this trade and this trade. Any feedback or observations? Is he going to finally take out this break level right here? I certainly wouldn't bet on it with eight minutes left. George, I got an observation. Yes, sir. The last <clears throat> long trade that you took right there? Yes. Notice that there's there's other blue candles kind of going up. Were any of those a possibility of taking? Well, yes. And here's and here's was my thinking. Which one which one has two candle clearance? That's what I was trying to figure out. It was just hard to so see. So like this one is almost the exact same, but this one finishes the fair value gap. I actually had this one marked, knowing I was going to take entries all the way to the fair value gap. This one, I can't, I, I just didn't, it just didn't work for me. Although look at it, you could have done it beautifully. You had two candle clearance right, and that could have worked beautifully. That, that's what I was looking at. You know, now remember VWAP was right here and it was going to do a bounce. 144 was down here. So I just didn't feel a hundred. It was one of those things you could have taken it. Yeah, we were in the middle. So I preferred the bigger pullback going closer to the fair value gap to me that made the most sense but you had two candle clearance there and man you you'd have done good and i was going bigger leverage here you know or you know like mike was talking about the 50 percent of that candle see the little dot pop up for some reason that works i mean perfect so i'm going to start noticing that even a little bit more you know but like here's an example I guess it depends. So I don't, I'm not going to break that down right now. That doesn't matter. Okay. Any other observations? Andy, is this coming to you even better now? It's helping, George, but this uh, feels like the PhD session for me. I understand. One day it'll be like, oh, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is, this is the, this is where you've got to get to be able to. Mark your own end of the day charts, which will bolster your confidence like nothing else. So just stay patient with it. The backsides are the most confusing things to draw. But it will come. And I'll tell you, watching the, the, the break levels and hold level videos, I can't tell you how many times I had to watch those, man. It was not a one time through and I got it. I know. I, I consulted with Dave today, and uh, he reminded me to uh, go through the uh, the process, the getting started, and uh, so I have started to do that. Just do it and put your head down. You know, even if you had to take a day or two off and say, I'm going to study today like a college student. And that's what you do, and you put it down, and you might have to watch that video twice. And you'll find certain parts of the video that just really resonate with you and you go, okay, this, this part of this video, I need to know. All right, Tuesday, November, I'm gonna go ahead and post this in our group, November 15th, I'm gonna day chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 for 14 trades. Now, the people who are newer in the group, and there's a few of you, there's not many, actually there's hardly anybody, I, you know, I've never asked anyone this, but is there anything on this that you just call bull crap to? Like, is there anything in here that you go, oh, that's just bull crap? 
because you did this inconsistent or you did that different this time and you're cherry picking that. I try not to. I'm really trying to be as fair as I can because no, I, put I think into this too. I, th I think, George, you're being uh, very fair uh, as opposed to the previous uh, group that we were in. It seemed like he was always cherry picking. Yeah, on these three minute ones, I try to, on these end of the day charts, just did the intraday act, uh, action, nothing that happened before it. Obviously, you got to take news events into, into circumstance. For example, there were all kinds of previous day lines that would have been here that this price sliced through. You're like, oh, those didn't bounce. Yeah, um, missiles hit Poland. So it's okay. You just delete them. <laughs> you know, you recognize that quickly and uh, go, holy cow, price is being aggressive. You know, I almost like, I'm, I'm curious, how big was this candle? I find any candle over eight points is stop trading. So that one was 11. This one and on a three minute chart. This one was 14. I almost wish there was a, indicator that would go off that tell me there was an eight point candle because i typically find when they do eight point candles and take out a break just stop there's no sense in taking a trade yeah the interesting thing is their nose to tail too yeah good point there's really not much overlapping so you know in and in, in our little system just to it takes out one break level we go oops wait a minute hold on it takes out two break levels, stop trading. We're just stop trading for a second here. Let's see what's happening. Because if it takes out one break level, that's normal. You know, prices, you know, we're going to be moving. We're going to be taking out break levels throughout the day. But if you take out two in a row, that's a stop, don't trade, capital preservation. And then after a big vomit, I want to bounce off two of my levels. And to be honest, that's a pretty recent rule for myself because i had to decide when do i know to get back in well the real obvious answer is when it starts bouncing off my levels and i won't know that until i've observed it at least twice seems logical to me and if i don't get another trade after a violent move who cares because we had normal action in here and we had 11 trades you got to be kidding me. And we were 14 for 14. Yeah, I got all those levels on there. Hey, George, just a comment for you on that. Yes, sir. One of the, and my brother and I were talking about this this morning. You know, one of the really cool, cool as you say, cool, cool things is that hmm. the things that you're modifying and the nuances that you're identifying and showing to people on a daily basis, the big, the, the huge factor here is that you're actually trading. I am trading while I'm trying to teach it. <laughs> but what I'm saying, you're actually trading as opposed to you're just not trying to create a piece of software. Oh, yeah, I'm not creating any. In fact, I'm teaching you not to need me. Right. And, and the thing is, but that that really, I think, makes a huge difference over the over the years that I've been with other options traders and different things. And some people did trade, some people didn't trade. You could see the difference. And, and to be with you while this is all happening and knowing that, you know, the, the, the changes that you're making is because many of these things are affecting you every day. At 100%. So it's like, oh, gee, you, you ask the question to yourself, well, I don't know, what, what is the right time to get back in here? Well, oh, uh, okay, well, let's check that out. Let's, let's figure something out. That's the, that's the you know, the, the, the real dynamics of it, which I think is just amazing. Well, thank you. Hold on. I want to tell Denny to get in chat, get on Zoom. He just posted his first end of the day chart so we can discuss. I hope Denny pops on so we can discuss his end of the day chart. Well, yeah, it's very true. Okay, Dave R., do I have any trade of eight videos? I don't really, but I guess I should make some. It'd be really short. It's something I could do pretty easy. But yeah, and... So no problem. Okay, thanks for that suggestion. You're not the only one to mention it to me. 
you know, the best thing to do, open up your trade of eight account, make sure they give you a paper trading account. And to be honest, that's how I learned it. And I'm more than happy in all honesty. And I, the easiest way is for me to record a video, I guess. But the other thing is we need to pop on Zoom and just go through it. We can go through it. No problem. Hey, Denny. Hey, George. Hey, congratulations. Posting your first chart. Do you mind if I share it with the group and we look at it? No, not at all. Okay, so your comments were first end of the day chart. I came up with four out of five winners. We'll have to compare with George. I just posted mine. So let's look at yours. And congratulations for doing that. Out of all the new people who's joined, no one has posted an end of the day chart. And I'm talking about even the ones who joined at the very beginning. Actually, one person did. Maybe it was you, Evan. But this is pivotal to your growth. Absolutely pivotal. All right, so let me zoom in for a second. These candles are close enough to my colors that it doesn't hurt my eye, so I will look at it. Yes, I, I haven't if gone he, to uh, trading view yet. I'm trying to see if I can just work with my platform. So <laughs> I understand. I promise you, if you switch to trading view, you will never go back. Okay. <laughs> um, but you can do whatever you want. Okay, so let's discuss what chart is this? Three minutes? Three yeah, minutes. Perfect. Okay. So you identified a break level here and you went and a short on that at 930. That was perfect. No problem. Absolutely fantastic. Now, I would mark my other break level against the body. Okay. So let's go to my let's go to my three minute chart for a second. And let me get rid of all these. This is really cool. I've never been, I've never done this with anybody. Tuesday, end of the day, they need to all go in there. Perfect. All right. My marking for this would have been the bodies and your long would have been right there, that white candle. Do you see that? Yeah. Not that that wick can't work because it will also be tested, but I tend to find if I do the bodies, I get more trades. Okay. You can, your mileage may vary. You didn't do that wrong. Just there's another way to do it. And you okay. did it on this one. There's the bodies. Yeah, there's I did that because of the two candles. I understand. You say in there, so. Yep, I understand. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, this one is, let's talk about this one. This one is missing one of, of the rules. How can I get over so everybody can see it big? So this level is missing one of the rules. I want you to look at it and tell me if you think you see the rule. And if not, it's no big deal. I will, I promise to tell you. I don't, I, I just saw the two candle separation. Okay. That's why I thought it was good. So. Which, which, what trade is that? Is that short or long? That's short. Okay. So let's talk about candle separation. And in fact, one of the best ways to do that is to go over here and go to our practice room because I have several exercises in candle clearance. Okay, let's do this one. How many candles cleared the level? Got a level here. How many candles cleared that level? Two. Two, yep. You click spoiler and it'll tell you one, two. So let's go back and look at your... So you were drawing a break level. I'm guessing yep. and did two candles get under that level before coming back yeah, the, the entire two, candle wouldn't the next three be under the under it the next three. Oh, you're talking about these yeah oh okay we're going to talk about several things here i'm going to help you i want to go find that on my chart i would in fact your markings even got me confused. I want to do this. Let's go here so I can get rid of all that other stuff. Just make a clean chart here. This is a valley. Would you agree? Yeah. The break level for the valley is at the bottom. This would become a hold level if price 
continued to advance like this. It's not this is, a swing high though at that point too? No. Well, it, it all depends on what price does. So I, you're, you're very intuitive there. I really love what you're thinking that. So let's go back to your idea for a second. How could this become peak? What would price have to do? It really would need to go to me even a little more away. I would not consider this peak. Okay. Because of what price is doing. So that might go in the unlearn all things because I've always used three candles. Now you got to swing high because they're lower. <laughs> yeah, I, I see what you're seeing. I do. Okay. But I'm not let me let me chew on this for a second. Let me look at my look, let me look at this chart and see if I can come up with a better way of what I want to say. And hmm. what if you took that big candle away? What would that change how you view it? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's let's take let's take the big candle away. Because the big candle changes changed it all. At this very moment, I am looking at this as a peak. At this very moment, I am looking at this as a peak. This would be my break level at this very moment. I don't have a hold level because I have no candle separation. I see what you're saying about the two candles and the, and the break. And I've never actually looked at two candles for a break. I've only looked at them for a hold level. And here's what my gut's going to say. And I've actually never said this. It's a great thing about teaching other people is if I don't have a hold level form, maybe I don't have a break level. And you wouldn't have a hold level because you wouldn't have the two candles separate. Yes. You, I, I, and I did not want to dismiss your point because I see what you were talking about. I see it. It's just now that I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking about my own trading, why wouldn't I consider that a break level? Because I don't have a hold level. The, yeah, I think that's the right answer. Let me go. George? Yes, what do you think, Vasily? Well, yeah, I, I fully agree that, okay, hold level was not formed. So, yeah, we don't have it. But also, if you look like six minutes before, it was also a swing high. So it's like it's already touched it. Yeah, kind of this. Yeah, this one. Exactly. I got you. Swing high. So this is already touched and bounced. So it, it would be the third. I like Vasily's point. Here's Vasily's point. If this is a peak, this is a peak. So therefore, this would have been a hold level. And it's certainly not a clean hold level. Prices went back and forth through that, through that level. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, six candles in a row went through this level. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like that explanation maybe even better. But I'm also going to start watching. If I don't have a hold level, I don't think I want to trade the break level. And he's correct. If this is If this is one peak and this is a second peak, this level has already been tested which makes the most sense because what did price do on the next touch? Went right through it. Yeah, it went right through it. That makes sense to me. I like your explanation on that one better, Vasily. As, as well, it looks like you've got like about a 40 point range squished up into a very small area, which I think is just also making things a little bit difficult for you because you wouldn't have your chart like that, right? What is the time, three minutes? Right. Let's see here. 39, six. So that was the bottom of the day. Cause I'm just, I just walked in as we were doing this. All right. It just looks so, very scrunched up and hard to, hard to decipher, almost like a muddy area. Hey, and he just used my exact word. It is muddy. You don't want to trade it. And that's like kind it, of where after the fact, I actually paper yeah, traded it. I understand. But after the fact, I thought about, that move down was a news event. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so and, almost now you got to go into a wait and see regardless. What, and I'm glad you said that because you weren't in here when I, after a big vomit, you've got to wait to at least two of the new levels start bouncing before you trade. Right. Okay. I require two new levels to bounce, not levels from earlier, but two new levels. So let's look at this for a second. Let's say you're at this time frame. There's nothing I would draw yet. If I drew anything, I might say, maybe that's a peak. I'd almost want one more down candle right here to make that a peak. Let's see what happens. Actually, I don't even know. Yeah, it just didn't really form but kind of formed and we don't in in general, if it's not a clear, clean, crisp level, you will hear me say that a million times. Don't trade it. Okay. So at this point, just going through this candle by candle, there's no way you would want to trade that 1980. Now it's just not clean. See that wick that just came down, George, and how yes. the guy that pees on the fence that George always talks about. So, you see the two bottom bodies of the candles that were created at the initial low down at 60. Okay. So yesterday's low was 66, right? Where are those bodies? 66 ballpark, right? So really, you know, when we talk about bodies, bodies are important. Maybe not in this particular scenario, but bodies to wicks always have a reasoning behind it and and that's part of the the nuance of any system and this system in particular right so that wick that came down that was my long at 67 small size and then i agree with i, I didn't catch a gentleman's name this was news driven Getting. right um, yeah. and i I didn't believe it was going to go any lower. So it was worth a small risk to me at that point, based off the bodies, based off yesterday's closing price. And there's um, no way in the world, Denny, I want you to take that price, take that trade yeah. at all. Yeah, I'm just talking bodies. He pees on the electric fence every day. And <laughs> he has an angel that overlooks him when he pees on the electric fence. And they're all successful. <laughs> don't trade it. I don't care if it's yesterday's low, high. I don't care at all. Because it also sliced through 10 other four hour levels and one hour levels and 30 minute levels. It just happened to bounce off whatever level he just said. So for, for the end of the day charts though, we don't take any of that into consideration. For the end of the day charts, we just look at the way these levels bounce. Okay. But in regular trading, if you want to know where the yesterday's high and low and close was, those offer confluence to your trades. But there's no way in this vomit right here, I want, I want, I'm going to take ownership of my traders, my traders to take these trades. Just don't yeah, do George, it. I didn't see anything in there um, on that puke down that made me want to get long. There was only two, just to go back to that topic, there's only two things that interested me a little bit you had two 30 minute break levels within like three points of each other and from, that's go ahead from yesterday, from yesterday all right let me finish this and then we can go look at that again okay. okay so when we were in that denny maybe it was a beginning of a of a break level but it never developed so it got muddy as we're looking at it candle by candle, it got muddy. And so you say, I don't know what this is doing. And I, it's very hard for me to say what this is doing. So I don't trade it. I wait. Gotcha. Okay. And then you had this break level long. Perfect. Perfect. You, you, you seem like you're focusing on, on the break level trades right now. Well, I guess the question on the end of the day, is it, because during the day, I'm watching both break level and hold levels. For end of day, you try to mark both? or Yeah, at the end of the day, I typically stick with holds. But I'm also training a lot of new people. So I'm trying to say, hey, well, let's also look at the break levels. I'm going to have a piece of homework for you if you'll post it in the end of the day charts. I want you to go back to your three-minute chart, delete everything. And all I want you to do are mark hold levels at the base of... I'm sorry, I want you to 
mark break levels like this one you had marked perfectly. I want you to go in and mark break levels. Every break level, I want you to mark them. And I want to right. go and I want to look at it later. Okay. Do it at the base though. Don't do it at the wick. Do it at the base for me. Gotcha. Because then what I want you to do before you turn it in, I want you to look at it with a critical eye and say, Could, would I've had more trades? Okay. But I, so if you'll do that, I'll look at it and give you my feedback. I'll do that. Fair enough. Yep. All right, man. So let's go back and look at the 30 minute chart for a second. So here's what I was saying. Michael M is you had two 30 minute break levels down here. If I was going to take a long and I was not because I was telling everybody in my room, not, <laughs> but you know how powerful those are. And it had to go, it had to navigate two of them. So if I was willing to be risky and try to catch a falling knife, I would have probably taken the first one knowing I was going to take heat to the second one, which by the way, was only eight points away. You can do that small. And that's almost within our six point parameter. And in right. fact, if you, if you required it to hit it, yeah, seven points, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. And I think Evan pointed that out earlier in the room about the 30 minute break levels, but two of them back to back, I think it offered some really strong bounce power. But yeah, that that would be the target that they're trying to. So I love those 30 minute break levels and 30 minute hold levels because I believe they have power. All right. Well, I think that's it. And that was a that was the same trade that Mike took, right? Yeah, Mike was in it. He rocked it. He don't mind he don't mind taking those trades. Yeah, and that's the thing is I didn't take it on the first drop. I took yeah, it on yeah. the pullback after it was confirmed to me that Smart. it was reasonable that it was the bottom. And Smart. then you look at a three minute chart, you've got two bodies. So it's not like I'm just slinging stuff like it's the wild, wild west over here when, when George says that. But if you're, if, if you're a new trader, do not do what I'm doing. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just showing you the nuances of the bigger picture of the day. Well, George saw it. There's two 30 minute candles right there. We had yesterday's closing price. We returned back into that area. Uh, these are the things that I put together in my head, you know, in a very fast time frame to make a decision. Paulo George, he's going to send you down the right path. And I, I interject when I think there's something very important to add to it. And that's it. And the only thing I added there, Michael M., was when we had that vomit, when do I know I want to trade again, is when two new levels bounce. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in old levels now. Those are all deleted. I don't care about them. I want to see it bounce twice. And so I'll drop to a lower time frame, like this minute here, and you go, hey, there was a bounce. That made sense that it bounced right there. Here was a break level bounce. Okay, we've had two bounces now off of new levels from the after the vomit. Now I'm probably interested in trading because I feel like if it bounces off two of the new lines, it's calmed down. Got it. The three minute, didn't we have a rejection off of the hold level that then paused it, then it just completely tanked? Which one? Did you go back to before it before it puked? Before it puked. Yeah. In terms of three minute. Sorry, yeah. three minute. And then, yep, right there. Um, two candles back. Here. Yep. What am I drawing there? So that wouldn't would that have been a full level? Hundred percent. Right. And when that, and actually, I was telling the room in this moment here, I was trying to figure out how to get short, and I because it already bounced. Mm -hmm. So I personally made the decision, okay, if it gets to this hold level, I'm mean, into this break level, oh. <laughs> I, I was going to go short. Right. I mean, no one knew it was going to vomit, but we're laddering down, obviously. Right. So I was like, I want to get short, but I got, I got to have a reason where at the end of the day, I draw that line and I can defend it to my group. Other than looks like it was a George trade. So 100% perfect. And if you could have, I, I personally, there's no way I'd have been in that trade. It went eight points my direction. I would have survived it going negative at all. 
So yeah, you would, you would have stopped out in profit probably. Yeah, I would not have been as much as I would want to say I could have been in that vomit. I know I couldn't have. However, there was one entry. Well, I think if you're watching it, there was, if you're watching the news, like when you guys posted that timestamp of when that thing came out. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> they rallied it up to the that level again, and then that's when it puked. So look that at this on a one minute. Though. Look at this on a one minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had a chance. That was your last chance. Yeah. Yeah. You, you had one chance. Yeah. And it happened. That, that was it. You know, you had one candle, but you, it's also very easy to say we obviously vomited on that one candle, taking out all these swing lows and break level, but I wouldn't have been in it. So, but I did go back and look and say, how could someone have been in it? Was there an entry? So I would love to say I was in it, but there's no way. And I didn't get that rebound. And Mike's, Mike's point that I did, he did not get in it until it had already rebounded. And then he got it like on the next rebound or something like that. That makes so much sense. But I, I can't incorporate that into my core strategy. All right. Anything else? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Thank you for the uh, thanks for explaining it. It's just one trader's opinion. It is not the law. It is not the fact. <laughs> it's just one guy's opinion trying to help people. So, Denny, if you'll go mark those uh, those break levels, I'll uh, look at that for you later. Yeah, well, hey, one quick question for you. Just you, when you mentioned trading view, and I know you use the continuous contract. How, what do you then trade when you trade on TraderBait? actual current month contract or yeah mm -hmm. e esz2 right now and how do you deal with the price being slightly different i don't care it's all a range let's be honest let me you know one of the things i, I they shouldn't be different front month uh uh the exclamation uh es on trade abate or sorry on trading view versus the front month because it's, it's, it's the continuous is just representing the front month so it should there shouldn't be any difference right so you see this little triangle here, this little peak. Price can bounce anywhere between the bottom and the top. We're really trading a range. Where in that range do we want to trade? I tend to like to trade on the front side of it. That's where I like to enter, which just happens to be called the back side because it's further back in time. But this thing could go all the way to the break level. We're literally trading a range. Being off a tick or two on your drawings is not that big of a deal. I'm trading, charting ES and trading MES, and it's one or two ticks difference because I mainly trade MES. So I know there's little differences, but I know that I'm really trading a range. I'm not trading the exact line because I'm willing to front run. I'm willing to scale into my trade and have several orders setting here spread out for me to go because i know i'm trading a range yeah we're drawing lines but at the end of the day you're truly just trading a range and somewhere in this area it's going to bounce right but i assume you're placing limit orders when you place those right i, I am and how do you know what levels to put on that fantastic question so let's say here's a level how bad do i want to be in the trade I ran one today, two points in front of it. And then I had another one right there. Then I had another one right here. And then I had another one right here. For a trade I really wanted to be in, I front ran at two points. And I know if price went all the way through and got me into all of them, my average would be right there at the line. But I wanted to be in the trade so much that what if it didn't go all the way? I want to be in that trade. What if it goes almost all the way? I want to be in that trade. Now that's comfort with the system and with certain levels. If it's a regular old level, let's say we draw this line. This is a front side level. Here's a break level. How much do I want to front run a vanilla regular old level? This one's an even better example. How much do I want to front run that? Up to three or four ticks is my answer. But if you wanted to require it to touch that line, 
touch it. I am. I would never say that's wrong. You're going to miss a lot of trades. And then you're going to start saying, now, how much am I supposed to front run this? <laughs> yeah, I, I was more just asking, maybe sure. I'm between the continuous contract and the actual contract you're doing. But if that, I, I, I'll be if honest, I'm not knowledgeable. It's true that they're same. I thought when I watched them, they're a couple points different. And, I don't see, I don't think, I, I, I've, the only reason I don't think it's a couple points is because I've been trading this for so long. I think two points would have knocked my socks off. Okay. I'll, I'll look at it closer. But before I, 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 so. I will, I am never afraid to front run something by a point. Yep. And the reason why, here's the reason why, because I can't tell you how many times price has come within three ticks and bounces. So many times that I consider if it's within three ticks, it's now tested. So that's why I don't mind putting my first set of orders one point, because if it goes three ticks, it's going to get me into the trade. I do not have all my contracts setting their one point in front of it. But if I'm going to enter, let's say three contracts, I might have one way out there, one at the level and one behind it. That might speak to the 50% mark on that. That might speak to the 50% mark on the larger candles that we were talking about a little bit earlier. It can give you something else to measure it against, especially on those larger range candles, which we tend to trade against, right? So when I believe George is right, three ticks is about the reasonable range to be setting your order above the cotton level. But if you got a eight point candle and that is maybe five ticks away from the 50% mark on that large eight point candle, well, maybe peppering your order in that zone using that reference point of the 50% on that large eight point candle would give you a definitive range instead of a guess range. And George has done this long enough to, to know where he wants to pepper his three separate orders for when price comes back to it. So, you know, I've been doing this for many years, right? And I had to learn George, George's system, but I was already using the 50%. And it kind of, from what I'm seeing, helps me in at least 50% of my trades, right? In front it running. gives me that range. Yes, correct. In front um, running. So I, I, a, a measuring tool, right? In front running and trying to decide where to place my my peppered orders of you know lot you know three separate lots right to get into a get into a trade hopefully that gives you a little bit more of a a measured mount with that front running and sometimes it does let me give you a live example now this is not part of our core strategy this is just something we kick around and uh, Mike actually uses. I have not decided to make this part of our core strategy yet, but here's what he's talking about with a live example. Let me cut this off here. So you have an obvious valley, okay? So we got a break level, we got a hold level. And if you had to measure this candle, where's 50%? I'm just going to mark where 50% is. Do you see what we're talking about? That if you're going to front run the candle, where's a great place to front run it? One or two ticks in front of the 50% of a big candle with a fair value gap. Does that make sense? Those, yeah, and those would be the areas you'd be peppering your orders, you know, whether this, it be, you know, two MES here, two yep. MES at, at you know, um, three ticks above the break line, you know, that's per trader's determination. But what we're trying to do is give you a zone to be looking at for the most optimal entry and to get you into the trade. How bad do you want this trade? How, how good of it? Is it an A-plus setup, right? And these are just measuring tools you use to decide that. This is how I would pepper my order there. If I was going to be using the 50% of that big candle, that has a fair value gap. So like I said, this is not part of our core strategy yet. Something we're still looking at, but it's, it's an idea. And if you're brand new, you know, be careful about how much you front run it. 
because it does add additional risk to your trade. I hope I we, I, we helped you there more than it confused you. If it confused you, block it out of your mind. You will get to it. I promise you. That was a very deep nuance <laughs> and front running a level. Mike knows Good explanation, more. explanation than... though, George. Good explanation though. Yep. That's what I do. I take complicated and try to make it simple. Yeah, because sometimes I just don't explain it to the, you know, I know what I'm thinking and, and you smooth it out for me. So <laughs> I'm the e, I'm the EMA, buddy. There you go. <laughs> okay. I think uh, on, on, on that note, I'm out of here. I got to go to yeah. the dentist appointment. Uh, great day, everybody. Um, you know, thanks for being here and we'll see you tomorrow. See you, buddy. So does anyone have any questions before we wrap it up? I think this was good. I'm glad I recorded it. So other people could take advantage of this if they listen to it. All right. Well, then, guys, I think that's it. I will see you later, and I'll try to get this uploaded. Thank you, Josh. See you guys.